Hello friends, in our last video of FM, we have learned the important concept of buoyancy. We have also discussed that why we do not consider the effect of buoyant force in the calculation of weight of human body as we all submerged in it. Friends, now let's see the example of Titanic. We will see the technical part related to buoyancy and there might be a number of reason of Titanic submergence but we are going to correlate it with the buoyant force or buoyant mass. We all know that Titanic hit an iceberg so it might be a situation for a captain that he misjudged the iceberg position. Let's see what could be the imaginary situation. Say this is an iceberg and this is a ship. Ship can easily escape from this iceberg without hitting this iceberg. But what could happen we can see from the principle of buoyancy. According to buoyancy there might be two type of condition. Condition A when whole object is submerged. This is case 1 and there can be a condition when an object is partially submerged or we can say it is a condition of floating body. We can write it as a floating body condition. So there can be a situation when the whole object is submerged below the water and there can be a condition where an object is in floating condition. Here we can correlate it with this that this iceberg is a floating body condition and when an object is in equilibrium condition it follow a law where we can just equate the value of force acting upon this body and that would be the self weight of the object with the buoyant force acting from opposite direction that would be Fb and guys we can easily calculate the value of Fs that is the self weight of the object and if we know the value of gamma specific weight that would be density of solid multiplied by g value gravitational acceleration and multiplied by total volume of the object. Similarly buoyant force we can calculate by density of fluid multiplied by g multiplied by submerged volume and this is the submerged volume and this is the total volume. Now if I will apply the condition B that is for floating body if I will equate the value of S F S is equals to F B I can see density of solid multiplied by G multiplied by V it would be equals to density of fluid multiplied by G multiplied by submerged volume. G G will be cancel out and we can calculate the submerged volume divided by total volume. It would be density of solid by density of fluid. In this case density of solid is nothing but the density of ice and we should know the density of ice is approx 917 kg per meter cube. This is the density of solid for me it is the density of ice and we know the value of density of fluid for sea water it would be approx 1025 kg per meter cube. This is the density of fluid. Now if you will have to see the submerged volume by total volume in percentage say 917 divided by 1025 you will get the value approx say 92%. So guys by buoyancy law for captain only 10% of iceberg is visible or we can say 90% of the iceberg is in submerged condition. So it might be the condition that ship could hit this bottom portion of an iceberg and that might be the reason on April 14 midnight in a journey to New York of Titanic which was considered unsinkable in sea it hit an iceberg Titanic is submerged. In last video I have also asked you is it possible for a child to lift a car and answer is yes he has to follow the Pascal law. Let us discuss the Pascal law. Pascal law is an important law of fluid mechanics which states that when there is an increase in pressure at any point in a confined fluid there is an equal increase at every other point or we can say that the pressure transfer for a closed fluid would be same in all the three direction. Let's understand this concept using this a short example 
say this three segments the pressure available inside this tube say it is 1 gram per centimeter square then 2 gram per centimeter square and because p is a function of h when h increases pressure also increases say this is 3 gram per centimeter square and when i apply a pressure of 1 gram per centimeter square then what would happen this pressure will transmit in all the three direction with same amount or same magnitude so it would be at this point 2 gram per centimeter square and at this point it would be 2 plus 1 that is 3 gram per centimeter square and at this point it would be 3 plus 1 that is 4 gram per centimeter square friends now i will tell you the one important application of the pascal law as i asked you in my last video that is it possible for a child to lift up so let's see by Pascal law first of all I will show you the arrangement available for this condition say this type of condition is available and if you will see at this segment 1 and 2 defined by me say at this point 2 it will see the top plan it's a cylindrical segment and it is also a cylindrical segment say the diameter available at the point 1 is 1.375 centimeter and diameter available for at point 2 it is 13.75 centimeter so according to Pascal law say there is a fluid available in this closed conduit and if I apply a pressure pressure will transmit in all the direction and the magnitude would be same so i can equate say at this point pressure is p1 and at this point pressure is p2 so i am going to equate both the pressure by applying pascal law and say at point 2 there is a car having mass say 2000 kg so i have to calculate what mass i have to apply at this point to lift this car so guys I can write pressure as force by area and here also at point 2 it would be F2 by A2. So I have to calculate the force F1 which would be F2 is again 2000 is the mass multiplied by 9.81 will give you the force and A2 is pi by 4 because shape is circular you can see in the plan pi by 4 A2 is 13.75 square multiplied by area that is a1 pi by 4 into d square that is 1.375 square you can see is pi by 4 pi by 4 will be cancel out and 1.375 divided by 13.75 will give you 1 by 10 and the square value is 1 by 100 and 2000 divided by 100 will give you 20 value and 20 multiplied by 9.81 would be the force at point F2 and I have to calculate the value of M1 so I can write M1 multiplied by 9.81 is equals to 20 into 9.81 and I will get M1 as 20 kg so guys a child having mass 20 kg can easily lift the car and it is interesting to know that all the hydraulic jacks are based upon this Pascal concept. In my last video, I have also asked you about the relationship between diameter and radius. See, in mathematics, we have already learned that diameter is two times of radius. But what about fluid mechanics? Before looking into the diameter and radius, say, first of all, discuss about Reynolds number. Reynolds number is defined as rho v d by mu. If I'll ask you what about this d value and you can simply say it is the diameter of the pipe. So guys, you should know when the flow occur in the absence of air under the hydraulic pressure is called the pipe flow and the shape is not defined. You can say if there is a flow inside this square section, it is also be a pipe flow and if it occur inside this rectangular segment, is also called a pipe flow. So guys, let's say for this segment or circular segment, I would like to tell you that this D is not a simply diameter. It is the hydraulic diameter, which is defined as 
four times of radius and this radius is called hydraulic radius and say for the circle segment hydraulic radius is defined as area by so area for this circular segment is pi by 4 multiplied by d square and whereas perimeter is pi d and if you will see the calculation part you will get hydraulic diameter as the diameter of the pipe so for circular segment you directly take the diameter as hydraulic diameter but what about this square section and this rectangular segment so guys say the dimension of this square segment is a by a so hydraulic diameter would be 4 times of a is a square whereas perimeter would be 4 times of a for this square segment so you will get hydraulic diameter as the one dimension of this square segment what about this rectangular segment say this dimension is a this dimension is b then hydraulic diameter I would get 4 times of area is a multiplied by b and perimeter would be twice of a plus b you will get 2 times of a and 2 times of b finally you will get 2 times of a plus b so the final dh would be 2ab divided by a plus b so you can see the importance of this hydraulic diameter and we will see the number of application of hydraulic diameter and radius when we will study the open channel flow in detail. Till then, please watching Recon Civil Academy videos. Thank you.